say is pi r squared. We all know that, but where does that come from? So there are several really beautiful things going on here. Uh, one of them is compartmentalizing things we really don't understand. And that number pi is the perfect compartmentalization of what we don't understand. And it's what's beautiful about all of this is that there's one thing we don't understand, but if we call it pi, then everything else we can understand. Okay, and so the original question was, of course, given the diameter of a circle, what is its circumference? And at first, people thought it was three, and then, I don't know, I don't know the history, but I just imagined three-ish was the original answer. And then it became refined a little bit, maybe 22.7. And then, of course, Archimedes, you can look at his calculation. I'll just leave it just behind the scenes, beyond the scope here. Uh, had a much better estimate, 220-something over 71 or something like that. Uh, just more digits, uh, just incredible. You know, but that doesn't help you understand what pi is, or to prove that's just an estimate. We still don't know what pi really is. Is it, is it a number, like three halves, or 22 seventh, or is it not a number, like square root of two? And so now we know, of course, that it's not a number, like square root of two, and it's actually much worse than that, right? It's not even, it's not even algebraic. It's transcendental, but that's ages into, into the century. But anyway... But let's just say we don't know what it is, but we're just going to call it pi. And in that case, the circumference is 2 pi r, because 2 r is the diameter, and we're calling pi that coefficient of proportionality. We don't understand it, but we give it a name, and so we feel better about it. Then, if I didn't know better, right, it was a, one, of a, one of the fundamental unifying moments in history. I would have guessed this... I know tau means something else. Tau is like 2 pi or pi over 2, I don't know. I'll ignore that. So if I had to guess, I now know that areas scale quadratically with radius. We just talked about it, right? So it's something r squared. So never would I have guessed that it's actually pi r squared. Never would I have guessed that. Would, would you guess that? That it's, right, it's again, it's a very mysterious number. I don't even know if it's a number. But what the hell, why would it be pi again, right? So there needs, needed to be that unification. And that unification is nothing compared to the unification that Archimedes did next. Okay, so here's the argument. You just find the center and you draw, you inscribe a triangle. And maybe you do many, and they don't even have to be equal. But it's the same sort of idea as we did with circles and squares, and maybe a skinny one, it doesn't matter. And we'll just see how the area becomes related to the length of the circumference. In other words, the circumference. Now, we don't know what area is, we haven't defined it, we don't know what circumference is, we don't know what infinity means, we don't know any of these things. But we can work with them and it'll help us connect things. Okay? Well. Let's add up all of these triangles. Well, each one of them has a height. H. You know what? Let's make them all the same. That's what I think I want to do, just for simplicity, so I don't have to write H, I, and D, I. Now imagine these are all the same. Given my, the quality of, you know, drawings that I've, that I've been delivering in this class, it's not much of a stretch. And that this, the length of this side is D. Okay? Then the area of the triangle is one half DH. And that's just one triangle. And there are so many of them, I would have to add them all up. Uh, another one half DH. You know, and the sum for as many triangles as we have. And then because they all have the same H, of course they also have the same D, I'm just trying to get the idea, so just humor me. I will factor out the one half, and I will factor out H. Right? Uh, and inside we'll just have a bunch of Ds. How, as many as there are triangles. Okay? 
And now I'm imagining that there are more and more and more triangles and they're getting finer and finer and finer. Right? And so D's get smaller, but there are more and more and more of them in there. Right? Am I saying infinity? I guess I am. Right? I guess I'm working with infinities, but I'm comfortable. Right? Because I'm just relating things. And so as this becomes finer and finer, what happens to what happens to H? Well, H becomes closer and closer and closer to the radius. So what we have is one half, then this will be closer and closer to R, right? And what's in parentheses, and that's why I wanted to group them this way, is getting to be closer and closer and closer to the perimeter, to the length of the circumference, right? And so that becomes 2 pi r times 2 pi r. And what's this product? Pi r squared. Do you guys see how the concept of infinity, not the concept of infinity, because it's not a concept. I'm just saying this way of thinking. I think Archimedes called it the method of exhaustion. Uh, proves that it's the same mysterious number, right? That's the big breakthrough. That's what's so amazing about this formula. This R squared business is amazing also because you weren't sure. Uh, the non-technical, our non-technical fellow citizens uh, all think the wrong answer. It's just not obvious. But yeah, we got comfortable with R squared. But it's amazing that the circumference and the area have the same mysterious number in them that they're created. It's a unify, it's a unification moment. <laughs>